Now, again, another day in lockdown. What a strange situation we find ourselves in. But there's always something to be able to paint. And if you've got a garden at home, I mean, I'm fairly fortunate. I've got some fairly extensive grounds here, but even if you've got a small garden, there'll be somewhere where you can paint something. I'll just take you for a quick walkthrough. Um, but if you kind of like look at the corner of my house there, there's a painting already. Just at the corner of the house, corner of that building, all that nice growth coming over the wall, bit going up the wall. Lovely little picture. Walk around here. And again, there's another little shed around here. But if you kind of like look at this as it is now, it doesn't look too auspicious really, does it? Past my bins and everything. But when you walk a little bit further around, you've got some lovely beach trees falling down old shed and if you square that off there look you've got the trees you've got the falling down old shed trees growing over it lovely dark shadows in the bottom to the left there it's it's, a, it's an ideal little scene make a fabulous painting but you've just got to look at things differently normally you would just look at them saying and yes it's there because you're used to seeing it look at it as a painter can I paint that? Can I make something out of that? And you can always change things a little bit as well. But today, I'm going to do a really old tree at the bottom of my field. Come and have a look. This is a black poplar. And they're always fairly late coming out with the foliage. But he's just come out now and he's looking very healthy with himself. But very, very old. It's ancient. And I've set up at the top of the field here, looking down at the field, at the tree. A little bit of distance, a little bit of sky, not too much sky. Got everything, and some nice strong shadows as well. So, let's crack on and do some painting. The poplar tree, centre of attention in this one. So it's time for a quick drawing and a glaringly white piece of paper. I always, I'm always nervous, even after 105 years of painting, I'm always nervous about this bit, an empty piece of paper. So let's get it filmed. And the poplar is a big, gnarled old thing. There's a tree coming out here. And if you look at that, there's a heck of a lot of twigs. Loads of twigs coming out of that, up in the top. I'm not gonna do them all, I'm just going to focus on the main tree trunks and the main boughs and then put a few twigs in. The pencil I'm using is it's not IKEA pencil this time. This one's a screw fix pencil. <laughs> I'm pressing on harder with the pencil than I would ordinarily so that you can see the outline drawing that I'm doing. And all, like I say, all I'm doing is looking at the main boughs, the big bits. And you'll notice on my piece of paper as well that I've only taped the top and the bottom that's because I'm going to put the pieces of tape on at the sides when I've got my drawing done. When I've got as much drawing as I need coming either side. Thick old tree trunk there and the bow coming off there. People are going out more these days, so there's a few more cars in the background that you'll hear. More than the last one we did out on location anyway. You notice there's no straight line, so I can wobbly my pencil a little bit now. So you see, red wine is good even for drawing. Get a few wobbly lines rather than straight ones. Yeah. And then I've got a couple of big bits coming out of here. 
Want to make that a little bit thicker there. Don't worry about running out of line there. Make it thicker. The paint will cover that up. And some bits coming down here. Apparently, black poplars don't grow any further north than Durham. And I'm about 70 miles further north than Durham. Um, here in Northumberland. So, it's bucked the trend a little bit. And when you think that my house was built in the very early 1800s, and this tree was here long before him, before my house, this is the most known as the most ancient thing in the village. And I'm proud to say it's on the corner of my land. they come further up there, look. But as I said before, you've just got to look at things. Truly look. Don't just see them, look at them. Digest what you're seeing. There'll be foliage on there, obviously, um, but I'm not going to draw foliage. Now I've got quite a lot of bushy bits at the bottom. Bushy bits, that's a technical term for you. And look at the nice dark shadow at the bottom of that tree there. And these bushy bits are getting taller as they come further forward. And here, I've got a bit of a pile pile being a technical term for bits of bush. Those fen fence posts are there, but you can't see them because they're behind that pile, but I know they're there. Now, I've got another one here. I'm going to change the shape of that slightly. In the distance, line of field there, and on top of there, there's some woods in the far distance. I know those well, so do the dogs. That really is about my drawing done. There's a, I think that's a rhododendron bush. Is that a rhododendron bush? Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have it. Now, what I need to do is tape off the sides and we'll make that into a lovely, strong painting. Portrait form, not that one. There we do. Do go as well, even. Drawing them. Or as much drawing as I need. Time for the sky wash now. And it's a fairly simple sky, this one. I'm going to use, I mean, really, that is cobalt blue. I'm going to use ultramarine blue because I want it stronger and darker. Plenty of water first. I'm going through the tree. Don't start going around things. You know what I mean. When people, there's a bug. When people pre-wet things, they kind of like carefully wet around stuff. Whilst you're doing that, the rest of it is drying on you. And that's when you make a mess of your sky. Just go through things. Now, mop up along the bottom. I'm going to have a tiny touch of yellow ochre and burnt sienna. I can hardly see with the sun, it's so bright. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, lots of water into this. 
It's just got a little bit of warmth in the bottom there. Look. Now, wash out, squeeze out, and mop up. Now, just ultramarine blue. When I say ultramarine blue, obviously, I mean French ultramarine blue. I just call it ultramarine blue. Plenty of water into this. And remember, it's going to dry nearly 50% lighter than when you put it on. So allow for that. Look how strong that is. Now, just more water into my brush. Move that down. Coming down into the other colours. Lighter. Gentle strokes there. Just leaving a little bit of that showing through. Wash out, squeeze out, and mop up. And again, wash out, squeeze out, and mop up. Now for clouds in this, very, very simple. Wash my brush out, squeeze it out, and just suck some paint out. Look, how easy is that? Because I've dripped there, I'll have another cloud there. Again, mop up. And another cloud. We'll have the cloud there. Lighter strokes there. All I'm doing is sucking paint out of the paper. But you notice I keep washing my brush out between clouds. That way I'm taking paint out rather than just moving it around. If I want a cloud shadow in that, in those clouds, as I'm taking out here, look, like so. Just pop a bit back in like that. See? A bit back in there. Now I'm going to let that dry and then go into the distance first. that one a little bit more there. there and now I'll let that dry now my sky's dried enough now it's probably still a little bit damp here and there but hey ho it'll be fine what I've got is a little bit of green hooker's green with a tiny touch of ultramarine blue in it and all I'm doing I've changed my round brush this time my number eight round just dropping those on there like so. They're a long way off, so I don't need to start and fiddle with them. A bit more water into that. Now, move it about a bit. Look. Pick up the colour, move it around. Oh, with my number eight round. I only use four brushes, as you know, in total, ever. I only use four brushes. And these are Aquafine brushes. Dale Rowney Aquafine, lovely brushes, and I also use them for my acrylics. I mean, you can buy acrylic brushes. System 3 acrylic brushes. But these do the job just as well, and they're sturdy enough to take the hammer of using them, using them for acrylics. So I don't change, I stick with the same stuff. And of course, the, the brush that I put my sky wash on with was the one and a half inch Aquafine. That's my number eight, Aquafine. Student quality brushes. I think that's about two pound 50. Now, a bit of yellow ochre for the field. Plenty of water into this yellow ochre. And I'm just gonna wash that on very loosely, very lightly there. Coming a little bit further forward. Now, hooker's green and yellow ochre. A bit of hooker's green with a lot of yellow ochre. There. Plenty of water again. Pop that in the bottom there. And that yellow ochre, of course, that I put on first is still good and wet. Go across there. And let the colour spread. You see it softening up into the others. A little bit more water over there. And that's my distance done. You don't need to fiddle about with the distance. Remember, the more detail you put into that, the further forward it's going to come. 
keep it simple. There. Now, if you look at the tree, there's lots of shadow being cast by different boughs all over, all over the tree trunk, and there's light bits showing. So, whilst they're there, I'm gonna paint those in first. I'm going in with a bit of Charles Evans sand. Charles Evans sand, it's not just useful for painting beaches. For all kinds of uses, light in general. A little bit of that there. I mean, the sand, it's good as a mixer uh, for lightening of the colours. Whatever colour you want to lighten, put sand into it, and it'll lighten it without muddying it, as white often does. It's good for stonework, really good for stonework. But again, put other colours into it. Looks like there. Bit down there. A bit under there. See how that shows lovely now. But again, this is with the tip of my number eight round brush. And this is a brush that I I really do knock hell out of this brush. I really abuse them all. But they'll stand it. And I've still got a nice fine point to be able to paint stuff like that. And a little bit of that here as well. A lot more colour is going to go on this, but I want to leave some of this sand showing here and there. There. Now, a little bit of yellow ochre. Plenty of water into this. Everything's drying so quickly today. Who needs foreign climes when you've got England in weather like this? Here. I'm doing the big bits with my number eight round. I shall go to my rigger brush for lighter stuff, for smaller stuff later on. Now, a little bit of raw umber with blue. Raw umber is the only brown I use. There it is. So if I put blue into there, green blue, I've got a sepia colour, see? Now if I put burnt sienna into my sepia colour, I've got Van Dyke brown. If I take my raw umber and burnt sienna, just the two, I've got burnt umber. So I've got four different browns from one tube. Raw umber. Brilliant colour. I use it the same way for acrylics as well. Look how nice and dark that is. And once I get that in, that really makes the light show up. Bumpy, don't make it all straight edged. I painted this tree in acrylics a couple of weeks ago. That was on my Twitter feed. If you're not on Twitter, go and have a look on Twitter. I've got loads of paintings on there. Every time I do one, I stage by stage it on Twitter. And the one I did in acrylics was really dark because it was kind of like strong dark rain clouds behind it and the tree really lit up. Here. 
You're also aware of that a little bit of light on top of those coming out from the side of the tree. Now I think it's the time to go to my rigger brush. My number four rigger brush. And again, Aquafine. Number four rigger. Still with the same colour. But this time, smaller bits, thinner bits. Lots of people are scared of rigger brushes because they are a flicky, bouncy brush. Just hold it further back and let it do its job. Let it jump about a little bit on the paper. There will be some bits of this. It's quite boring to watch because it's just more of the same. But I don't like editing bits out. I like everybody to see everything that I do. There's nothing worse than you get halfway through a painting and then you see the finished painting in front of you. Or done in fast time. Well, for a start, I don't know how to do things in fast time. I'm not technologically minded. And even if I did, I wouldn't see everything. twigs. At this stage I'm just going to invent a lot of twigs. Still with that same colour, that same mix. starts to take shape. Notice I'm turning it across at the top a little bit. That's a good way to capture wind as well. Um, wind blowing through the trees. Bend them over a little bit. I'm not doing it for wind, I'm doing it because that's the way my tree grows. Or has grown over the years. See now, I'm just letting the brush squiggle around a little bit. And draping those down. Twigs coming out of them there, look. Now, as soon as I start and get these bits here, coming down through the field, see how this starts to knock all the distance back, further back. Now, black. And of course, I don't use manufactured black, make it black. Look, here we go. Ultramine blue. Burnt sienna. Too much burnt sienna, I've been more blue. There we go. Not flat and dead like a manufactured black. So now, ultimately, somewhere nice and dark here and there now. Coming across into the more lighter areas that are left, which I shall be softening later on as well. And just here and there. Whack on some dark. Whack, that's a technical term. I'm quite sure quite a lot of people down south don't understand the word I'm saying. Whack and splodgy bits. Grass. Which is grass of course. And quite often I will have a path in the paintings. 
which of course is a path. Keeping on with the black, nice and strong. I mean, this tree is really quite a dark tree trunk and boughs in comparison to the lovely light foliage that's on it. And consequently, you can see the, the boughs through the foliage. And some of the some of the twigs that I'm painting, I'm not painting in the black so that they are lighter than the ones in the front. Isn't that easy? Really lovely painting outdoors. At the moment, I think I should be in France, or was that last week? I was doing, I had a fully booked course to go to France, but of course that's been cancelled with the coronavirus. When I say cancelled, it's now in August. Hopefully we'll be allowed into France in August. But you never can tell. Strange times, these are very, very strange times. And now I've got all the colours on it that I want, really, but some of them are hard-edged. That's not a problem, because now I'm going to soften those. I'm going back to my number eight round brush. I just with a wet brush. All I'm doing, tapping on the dark bits first and taking that across into the lighter bits, look, see? See? Just moving colour, softening, reactivating the colour on the paper, really, but leaving it light still. Light, but not hard-edged. That's just with a damp brush. Now I'm going to let that lot dry before I start with the foliage on the tree. Because then, of course, once we've got the foliage on, we're going to have more shadow on the tree being cast by foliage and by various boughs onto other boughs. It all makes sense to me. I know exactly what I mean. <laughs> but for the time being, I'll just let that dry for five minutes. Sorry, I'm getting taken over by dogs here. This one's Frank. Frank, who is the daddy of Bert? The babies. Anyway, back to the tree. And this time, I've got my three quarter inch wash brush. Again, the Aquafine. And if you look at that foliage, it's a very light colored foliage. Hook of green. And now a lot of yellow ochre, like so. A little bit more green. There. There we go. Now the tiniest touch of sand, child of the sand. You see, sand is not only good for beaches; it's good for black poplars. <laughs> Now, just with my three quarter inch brush, I'm splitting the brush like that. Give it some hammer, you're not gonna hurt it. Now, split one. See? More of that here. Now, how? 
how easy is that? All I'm doing is stippling. around. Now you can still see the tree trunk through that foliage. Spreading it up with quite a bit there. More down here. Now, a little bit of yellow ochre, just yellow ochre. Split the brush again. You can get some on the outer edges here and there. Just that additional little bit of light. mad with the yellow ochre. A bit there on the outer edge. Because of course the light is coming from the left anyway in this picture. You can tell that by the lovely dark shadows underneath the hedge here. Or should I say there. Now a little bit of blue Green blue, of course, that's the blue of the sky. Don't change the blue throughout the picture. A little bit of blue, tiny touch of a little room crimson into that. Split the brush again. We'll have a few bits of that down here. Don't go mad. Now, I'm being very light with the brush. I'm being really hard with the brush in the palette. But when I go on the paper, I'm being really light with it. Tickling the paper, <laughs> tickling the paper. Because if you go too hard, you'll close the brush up again. And now, I want a few bits of shadow on the tree trunk from some of the foliage, and that'll be the tree done. I'm actually quite pleased with the way that's turned out. No doubt on YouTube, there'll be a few people that give the thumbs down. What is all that thumbs down business about? What's not to like? Therefore, nothing. <laughs> Here's a bit of ultramarine blue. Now, a little bit of alizarin crimson. And a little bit of burnt sienna. Ooh, too much burnt sienna. More blue, more alizarin crimson. There. Like a dark aubergine colour. What I'm doing with that is looking at the tree trunk here and there and re-establishing a few darker bits. That's a light aircraft going over. You don't see many of those these days in the present conditions. Aircraft. Now that foliage there is casting shadow underneath on there. A few bits there. Nice and dark there. do for the tree really. Now it's time for the hedge. Now to the hedge. And for the hedge it's exactly the same system that I did the foliage there but just a lot more of it. Starting off with yellow ochre. There. I don't want too much water in these mixes. Now split the brush again. Three quarter inch brush. 
and step along. Just get the light on there first. And there's nothing wrong with leaving bits of white paper. I won't be leaving that much white paper, but there's nothing wrong with leaving bits of white paper showing through. Now, hooker's green and this time burnt sienna. If you remember for the foliage, I did hooker's green and yellow ochre. This time hooker's green and burnt sienna. The darker green there. Not quite that dark, a bit more green. Yep, there we go. Hooker's green is so good for mixing. You can mix it with every other colour you've got. You've got loads of different greens. Because greens are a big problem to a lot of people. Hooker's green and burnt sienna. Again, stipple. Leaving bits of the yellow ochre showing through here and there. Don't need it all straight at the top. Colin the gardener hasn't done that bit yet. <laughs> but you notice how it's getting smaller. It's going off towards the bottom of the field. Now, a little bit of blue. Ultramarine blue again, of course. And it's just blue. But again, split the brush. Get that in the bottom. Bringing it up a little bit here and there, but nice and dark at the bottom. Get your bottom nice and dark. There. Can I say that on YouTube? Probably not. Now, a little bit of digital art. Just tap on, move it up a little bit. A very simple hedge. Just want a little bit more in there. I should leave that now, because it's the heap here next. So now, a little bit of burnt here. A little bit of that underneath. Not strong enough, a bit more, less water into it. But that was better. And take that into there. A little bit of raw umber. but just by itself with water obviously but no other colour into it and just pop that in there's going to be a lot of shadow down there eventually now I've got some little posts in there as well so I'm going back to my number 8 round this time and black again ultramarine blue Tip of my round brush. Down onto it a little bit. More water into it. And soften it in there. And again, clean damp brush. Just dab on and soften it. Now it's this bush. As soon as the big tree's been done, have you noticed it really marches on, this painting. And I'm starting off again with a little bit of yellow ochre, and this is a different coloured foliage, it's a darker coloured foliage than on the poplar. Starting off with yellow ochre though, to get a few little bits of light. Here and there. Now, again, hooker's green and burnt sienna. There is my hooker's green and some burnt sienna into it. A bit more. And again, split the brush. This brush is over two years old. And it gets this kind of treatment every day of its life. The poor thing. And it still comes back for more. It really can't hurt these that much. Aquafine brushes, they are fabulous things. And again, a little bit of blue.
Somebody said to me the other day on feedback on YouTube, a couple of weeks ago, can you clean your palette out so that we can see the colours you're mixing? <laughs> no! That is sacrilege! I like my good mucky colours. A bit of blue in that. I will do most things for most people, but clean my palette out is something I won't. And again, a little bit of digital art, soften that. Now with my rigger brush in that one, and still with the blue, but this time a bit of burnt sienna into it as well. Not quite black, but it's dark. I have a few twiggy bits in there as well. Look. Just with the rigger brush. And I'm just letting the brush jump around on the paper. Look. more. That'll do for that. Actually, I'm going to have a little bit of that in there as well. I'm doing that with my regular brush just because I had it in my hand. Now, I'm going to give that a couple of minutes to dry because I need to touch the base of that when I put on the grass. Sorry, the grass. Oh, it's time for the grass. A little bit of yellow ochre and plenty of water into this. Just yellow ochre with loads of water. What I'm doing is wash that in there, like so. One. Now, you notice I've only come halfway down. Now, hooker's green with a lot of yellow ochre. There, plenty of water into it. up into the other. Now as you can see, my grass has just been cut. To get that effect, very, very simple. Wash out the brush, squeeze it out, and just suck out some paint here and there. I don't need to go back, just a hint. And you can tell that Colin's cut this grass after lunch. <laughs> That's his one. And stroke through. Now that needs to dry for a minute or two, and then put the final shadows on this. Now it's time for the finishing shadow, the thing that finishes the whole painting off. And if you look at the hedge over there, look at the lovely deep shadow at the base of it and coming out to the right here. Absolutely gorgeous. There's some really strong shadows around today because of this lovely light. I mean, look over there, for instance. Look at the depth of shadow in that corner underneath the beech tree. Beautiful, strong shadow. And it's that kind of thing that really makes a painting. So, I'm going to go in with my mix here of the blue of the sky, which of course is ultimate blue. A little bit of alizarin crimson. So I've made a really, quite a naff purple there. Now a touch of burnt sienna to tone it back. A bit more blue, there. And that'll do for my shadow, there. A bit of water into that. I'm starting off at the base of the tree there. Popping it up there and bringing it into that heap. And spread it down a little bit. Now at the base of the bushes, uh, the hedge, sorry, and bring it out a little bit. Whatever is casting the shadow, touch that thing with the shadow. Does that make sense? I know what I mean, but look, for instance, over here. If I had a, a post, and then I put the shadow there, that post isn't casting the shadow, but that is. See, always touch it. Touch it 
touch the hedge and bring it out. And again, touch it and bring it out. Now, let's imagine we've got a tree. I don't have to imagine too far because I can see it. Out of shot, here. Now dapple that with the foliage on top. Just dabbling on. Dabbling, that's another technical term. And there we go, that's the picture done. All I need to do now is take the tape off and show you the finished painting. And there we go, a finished painting. The difference it makes when you take the tape off. A little bit of wind is just moving up. Um, but you can see where the shadow comes in. Light to dark as well, it takes the eye into the painting and just gives it the shape. But it's important not to make them too blocky dapple it a little bit. Now all lots of tips and techniques are in this book here. This is the advanced copy, you don't see that. That's the uh, Charlie's top tips. Is it? Charles Evans pocket book for watercolour artists. I've done so many books. <laughs> but that is just full of tips and techniques. There's loads of stuff going on there and lots of bits about trees. Lots of different trees and lots of stage by stage little demos, but full of tips and techniques. Look, all kinds of bits going on in that. But it's not an expensive book, but it's such a handy little book. So many people just keep that in the paint box all the time. The paints I've used are like the brushes, Aquafine paints, strictly speaking, students quality paints. And these, they're one pound each a tube on my website charlesevansart.com um, they are really good strong colours as you can see I genuinely have used student quality paint with this um, you know, lots of people think I just say that I don't that's what I use I do use artist quality as well that is a lot more expensive I haven't used this in this painting but for instance cobalt blue in shops, artist quality, Dale Rowney, artist quality, cobalt blue, it's about 18 quid or something like that. We sell it for nine pounds. We sell all the artist quality tubes of paint for nine pounds. But the Aquafine, just superb paint. Really good, strong colors. And they're not expensive, so you can practice to your heart's content. The brushes I've used, again, like I said, Aquafine, one and a half inch flat for the sky, three quarter inch flat, for the trees and various other bits. My number eight round again for the tree and my number four rigger. Those are all the brushes I use. Really useful, hard wearing brushes. So, hopefully you've enjoyed that. And I shall do another watercolor after this one for the next YouTube demo. And then we'll go back to some acrylics. See you soon, stay safe.